So Peter is going to talk about um, improving that scenario and fixing the um, CLI uh, script and, and testing that those case. So behavior of the developer fixed. Aha, uh -huh. good. <laughs> good, thank you. Thank you. Before I start, also, I'd like to uh, thank two former colleagues of mine uh, the, at Vision, where I worked uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and this talk is inspired by Dimitri, and uh, it's for Andre. So, and maybe for some other people also here. Okay, so um, you all know the 80-20 the, the rule, right? That's the, uh, the Pareto principle. And um, I mean, if you don't happen to know this, it's a very popular rule. Um, it, it basically says that with 20% uh, of the input, you get 80% of uh, your desired output. And uh, also on the flip side of the coin, if you, um, if you uh, happen to have only 20% of where you want, what you want to achieve, what is missing, you need to invest 80% of, uh, of your energy. And uh, yeah, um, that's very popular in, in consulting and in project management. What do you think? Um, does it work in software development? Does it? Of course it does. Your uh, product owner mentions it every day or at least every week at the backlog refinement, doesn't it? Doesn't she? Yeah, so, but uh, for us software developers, does it work? Can we write just uh, 20% of the code and uh, are fine with 80% of the feature working? Or if you if we talk about uh, test test code, is it fine? We, we just do 20% uh, test coverage and, uh, and then it will uh, just do for 80% of the uh, box. Should be okay, right? Think about it. Um, yeah, what do you think? Um, yeah, this talk is about uh, Python CLI applications and uh, writing tests, writing tests. And um, I'm going to walk you through uh, this topic because I want you to write tests, right? And um, my name is Peter Bittner. I'm a developer of people, companies, and code. I run uh, panel software and a few uh, open source projects, uh, free software projects, really. And um, a few of them are listed here on, on the slide. And um, uh, for my day job, I get paid uh, by a large uh, telecom company that, that powers the, the internet in most part of Switzerland and make sure that your phones run stable. And I do that as a develop in the role of a dev, uh, DevOps engineer. Yeah, and I love to, to delight people with, with working software. That's what I do. Yeah, and uh, I'm here with this talk to to talk to you that you are maybe a person that feels a bit like that, feels a bit like Andre, and uh, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm here to give you one less reason to to say that automated tests are cool and we should do testing. Fully agree, but. It doesn't work for me, it's not for my use case because I need to move fast, okay? And think of that, uh, when we move fast, I mean, scripting is a lot of um, hacking things together quickly. And uh, what is the, the penalty of this? Don't you sometimes feel that uh, you're paying the price for that? And there is someone who I think knows that very well and um, probably you know him, Uncle Bob, it's Robert C. Martin. And um, he is, um, yeah, he's someone who, who, who knows that well, the problem, and talks about it. He's uh, one of the founders of the Agile Manifesto. And let's listen to what he says. Tell your friends in technology that the only way to go fast is to go well. Okay. The only way to go fast is to go well. So if you want to go fast... Write tests. You are my friends in technology. So I'll tell you, please do what Uncle Bob says. All right. So here's what I'm, where we are going to look at. So CLI applications, um, 
Well, I, I'll quickly give a, a quick intro into what, uh, what's wrong with scripts, what I think what's wrong with scripts. I'll give a quick coding example, and I'll try to do a, a bit of refactoring try to make the code nice and, and maybe uh, better working, and we, we find out uh, whether this, this already solves the, the, the problems. And, but it's mostly for you, uh, everyone here, to, to warm up and um, to, to get some ideas and get inspired. And then uh, afterwards, uh, I show you why I think it's a good idea to, to uh, create CLI applications and, um, uh, and, and what the challenges there are when you start writing tests. Obviously, I have, um, um, yeah, written a piece of software, an open source project that helps with writing tests because there are some of those challenges that I'm going to mention later. And I'm, I'm going to give a coding example and try to do some, some actual uh, uh, yeah, TDD uh, showcase um, if the time is sufficient. Great. Questions? Please interrupt me if you, we are, I'm, I'm sure uh, I need to rush. Um, but if you, if, you, if you want this to be interactive, I want this to be interactive. I'm happy if you interrupt me. Great. So what's wrong with scripts? Um, in short, a lot. Um, you probably know that just as well as I do. Um, the good thing is of writing scripts, it's easy to get started, right? Python is such a, such a great um, uh, language and it's probably one of those reasons why it's so popular apart from, yeah, especially in the, in the, in the non-software development world, like, like um, yeah. Uh, yeah, data modeling, um, uh, all that that I know too little of, I'm sorry. And uh, you just uh, open a file, a uh, text file, rename it uh, to .py, and you, you, you start writing uh, code. And that's it. Write a few lines. It's as easy to get started as with, with Bash scripts. Uh, in the long run, it's better than, than, than Bash, but um, you know, how features are, they start growing and features, a feature never stays as small as it, as it starts out with. So it's growing and growing, then you start adding classes and then you, maybe if it's so long, then you start, yeah, uh, trying, uh, trying to move things out into uh, separate modules and so on. But the problem is really there are limited possibilities for structure when you write scripts, you have much more possibilities later. I, I, um, yeah, uh, we will look into that. And uh, of course, that all uh, pays into the, uh, the, the problem that, that it's harder to do unit testing, harder to do testing at all. You, usually you have, um, yeah, in a typical script, what I've seen is you have hard coded paths there and so on. You can avoid this when you are careful, but yeah, it's still hard to do uh, testing especially unit testing and so mocking and stuff. And then because it's not a package, it's just a script, it's just a uh, file, like a batch script. You have no dependency management, you have dependencies for good libraries in Python. And, um, and also when you split this up, a dependent a deployment, yeah, maybe it's not, you don't see this as a big problem, but you have to uh, take a little bit of care when you deploy a split up um, script and so on, yeah. And uh, in the end, um, the user interface, if you have one, if you have some interactivity, it's a custom one. It's not a, based on an IEEE standard. And uh, yeah, maybe not a problem for you, but maybe for your users. Great. Um, yeah, and, and that's all reasons why it's hard. they are hard to test. And I mentioned that already, right? Good. Then let's jump to the coding example. Um, yeah, I think I can do without switching because then I, we can try to avoid the pain here. Um, I just need to make sure I get the, oh, yeah, no. Yeah, cool, great. Okay, so I'm here at a, let's just do, I've here, I've got a, um, no, what is this? Um, tree script example. I've prepared a script example here. And what I'm going to do is make that a little bit fun. Um, 
I'm going to do some things, uh, try to refactor it. So um, let me just open this up in my editor. Codium, you should use that one and not code because it's the actual free software. So um, yeah, I need to make this maybe it's too big. Sorry. Too big, right? Okay, is that good? Or is, is that too small? That's good. Okay, so I have this workflow script. I've already started to to move uh, some things to some, some modules out there. So helper, helper modules, basically. Um, you can see that there is much more here. There's a lot here, tickets handling or so. I, I probably handle tickets and, and access an API or something. I have some, some hard-coded paths here. Here is the other helper. You, you probably see that this, these are not relative imports and so on. Let's just try to find out whether this actually works. Python and script example workflow, yeah. Okay, that's the custom user interface. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, we can do better. Maybe add something here if we can try to... Well, I'm, I'm a bit short on uh, time, and the good thing is I can just check things out that I have prepared. Oh, no, no, Let's see, GT. So, um, get checkout usage, so, now, come on. Uh, yeah, get checkout. That's when I, when you screw things up and then you need to correct them, okay. So maybe, so I have added this uh, thing here. So that's my user interface. Um, then when I run the script again. Okay, I get a usage when I, let's, um, what do, if I do a help? Okay, I still get the custom user experience, not so nice. I can of course change this and uh, yeah, um, and then, uh, sys argv, um, okay, equals two, and uh, you know, that, that's how scripts look like, huh? And, um, and, um, and, um, um, what, what is this, sys argv, and what was the index? I think one equals minus help, and, um, the, yeah, and I try it out. Ooh, no, what's wrong? Did I have a bug? Oh yeah, that's never gonna be, let me see the bug. I don't have tests, so I couldn't, I couldn't verify this. Cool, that works. Unfortunately, let's check if the man is H. No, that's, okay, I need to do some more other stuff, but okay, let's, that, that's uh, basically fine. I still, uh, I think I want to move the ticketing to um, some ticketing library. And yeah, okay. And I add a new uh, file here. Okay, ticketing. Okay, now you, you get the idea. I, I do this again with get checkout. Um, I have prepared this so I can, um, yeah. So let's try to, to completely refactor because that will otherwise take too much time. So yeah, I moved um, all the stuff, some stuff, the Kubernetes stuff to some here and the logging is here. Yes, not much, the ticketing is all here and I have imported that here. Um, all that stuff, yeah. And uh, okay, so one, one, one problem is still there. What is it? So to be able to, to test the thing, I, I, you know, what happens when I run this? What, what happens when I import this? So let's try to import this, Python, and I say, oh no, wait, wait a minute. 
the script sample Python import workflow. Okay. Okay. What happened? Oh, God. Um, you know, because when, when I run tests, you know what happens? Um, I think PyTest imports or a unit test framework imports the, the module. So you need to avoid that. And you know how to avoid this? You have to do some extra programming, of course. You need to move this down here. And um, yeah, I must be before the logger. And um, maybe or not. Um, yeah, let's put it down here. And um, of course, let's get rid of this stupid thing. Command, nobody needs it anyway. The code says it all. And yeah, and I do if name equals main. Ever uh, wondered what this construct is all about? It's about making a module be able to be imported. Okay, so now you can do import workflow. All good, no code is executed. That's important, yeah, for, for, for uh, doing testing. Okay, do I have something else? Oh yeah, now we have still a problem here. What is the problem? The helper, okay. Doesn't look like a problem. It's not a relative import, so what's... Let's try, for example, if I do... Um, I install um, a library, pip env install um, um, helper. You know, there's a, a, a library that is called helper on PyPI. Uh, project helper raid. So, um, yeah, I am going, we are going to install that, right? Maybe, maybe useful. Uh, maybe we need that. Um, so we install it. And we go to pip and shell. And uh, then we run the script again. So it's Python workflow. Workflow pi. OK. What does it say? Uh, oh, sure. Uh, yeah. Stupid me. That's the bug that is between a monitor and the seat that's not there. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. But why, why, why doesn't it work? Yeah. It, it, but it worked before. So when I exit that virtual environment and then I run it, And ah, now I'm here. Anyway, so workflow. That still works. That's weird. And the problem is really, you figured it out, that the installed, um, it's on a Python path earlier, the installed packages, and they take precedence. Yeah, so you could override that, but yeah, he would hack into the mechanism of Python. So we don't want that. So how do we solve that? We create a package and do relative imports, for example. Okay, so let's go back to the talk. All right. So, um, yeah, I think any questions on that? Yeah. Good. So. Why do you want uh, CLI applications? I mean, the coding exercise was fun. It was fun for me. Um, but um, yeah, maybe you want a standardized user experience. There is, um, th this was not IEEE standard um, 1003.1 on like, like on Unix uh, systems where, where the tools should have a standardized uh, user interface, which looks a little bit like that, like what the usage says. It's foo bar buzz. The bar is a, a positional argument and the other is an optional argument. And uh, 
what we would also get from a CLI application is more possibilities for structure, uh, relative imports, where we don't have problems when we install packages. Um, so we have free naming. Uh, possibilities for all kinds of testing. We can do unit tests, we can do functional testing, whatever. Um, behave, I can show you this later, BDD. And um, yeah, we have dependency management, what we don't have there when we do a packaging. And uh, we have the packaging and, and distribution, so we can do pip install somewhere. We don't need to copy things somewhere. I mean, one example, well, let's not talk about Django, but um, yeah, they also do it in a scripty way. And there are people that say, well, you should package it up, your Django application. The uh, CL applications are much more straightforward. Um, well, yeah, that's what, what, what we can do, pip install with a thing that we have done well. Okay, and there are a few popular um, proponents, for popular packages that uh, here, modules, that, that we can uh, use for writing CL applications. So ArcPass is, the, is from the Python standard library. Um, it, it looks like that, basically. This, um, you basically create the, uh, the argument parser here with a description, and then you add arguments and so on, and, and the, 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 the uh, line nine parse arcs basically does the, the, the action, then basically it, it then uh, interacts with you as a user and um, and refuses wrong arguments and so on, for example. Who can spot why um, I used a, a parse arguments uh, function here? You, you, can't, you don't need to do this. You can simply write it uh, in, the, in the main function that then gets called like we saw before in the script. Why did I do that? Any hands up? Exactly. This is for unit testing, so I can just test the parse arguments. And yeah, great, great answer. And then we have click. This works a little bit different, differently, and you see it's much more concise. You have also more uh, capabilities. Uh, for example, here you can see this is just a um, yeah. I just have, I have this version uh, option still, you know, kind of minus minus version, I get the, 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 the package version. Um, then I have an argument, file name, it's a positional argument. And uh, yeah, I simply write that out. I could do print, but click echo is more better suited. So they, 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 suppose, uh, they, they suggest it in the documentation. This is still a string argument. So when I add the type here, like path, I can do the same thing and uh, click just uh, verifies that this is an existing path, for example, file path, or I can even let click uh, do the entire file reading, and so, so I get an actual file object. So there are cool capabilities, and the, the code is very concise. When, when, the, when the click CLI application grows, it, it gets a little bit messy or so, so there are people that don't like it and prefer other uh, um, options like, like ArcPass or DogUp later. But it's, it's great, it's still great, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's cool. And yeah, a, a third option, third popular option is DogOpt. Um, I've only yeah, recently discovered it. Um, the idea of this is you have this standardized um, API in, in the end user interface and uh, it, it's actually based on an IEEE standard, the, the, this IEEE standard, uh, POSIX IEEE is standard um, 1003.1, and it mentions these, these uh, utility conventions, uh, and, and those are conventions, basically, that you, you have, for example, the, the positional arguments either in capital letters or in these um, brackets. I don't know how you say this in English. And, um, and the optional in square brackets, for example, and, and the, the, the um, options yeah, with, with dashes or double dashes and so on. So these are conventions and um, DocOpt leverages this, these conventions and parses your, your user uh, your usage. 
You basically simply write the usage here. If you want to add a new option, you just add a new line here in the doc string. And then the doc string is parsed over there and um, in line, uh, line 18, and you're done. And that's basically the same thing. It's very similar to, um, to arc pass. When it's uh, the, the parse arcs here on line 9, um, it does the same thing as the, the doc opt on line 18 here, basically. Yeah. Again, I've, I've, I've used this parse arguments. You can, um, again, for, for unit testing, so it's easier to do. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, basically that's an, another option. I, I picked those three popular ones. There are uh, more out there. Uh, pick whatever you, fits your needs. And yeah, the, now we actually come to the meat of this, this, this presentation, this, of this talk. So the challenges of writing tests. So how to get started uh, with CLI applications. There is a little bit uh, overhead to, to get started, but uh, there is a, um, a project out there. It's called CLI Test Helpers. that has a sample code where you can, I will, I'll show you later, um, where you can get started uh, in no time, basically. And, uh, but there are still challenges that we need to uh, overcome. And one of the main challenges of these um, CLI frameworks is that basically, well, you, you, you can unit test the code that you write, okay? But um, here, it's not, it's not what, what code is it? You can unit that, that code down there, but over there you have configuration up there. You also want to make sure that what you have configured is actually valid, or whether you have some misunderstanding of the of that API. And um, and yeah, come on. Anyway, uh, you you want to test the CLI configuration that you made, whether it's in in Click or ArcPass or in Dogopt. It is, it is still code. It's not Python code, but it's it in, in for Docopt, it's, it's a configuration. We want to test it out, but the contr the, the, this control is a bit taken away from us. Yeah, because we, we, we have these annotations with click, and, um, and this is code that runs in somewhere else. It's, it's in the modules, in, in the, the package. And, and we don't want to, to, to unit test the, the CLI at the, the click package or, or, uh, or Doco, um, Docopt or ArcPass. We don't, but we want to uh, test the configuration because that's code that we wrote. Um, there are ways to, 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 to do this. I'll show you later. And um, yeah, and um, the package, when we do packaging, we also want to verify this. And um, and we, that, that requires a deployment. For example, if I, uh, with, a, with, a click opt, uh, with a click application, it's in the documentation of the click um, um, uh, package that you should uh, create an entry point. You do this with setup tools or, or, or a Pi project, uh, Tama, uh, that you create an entry point. When the, the package is installed, it uh, creates basically a script alias for you. So instead of doing Python uh, foobar to pi, you simply can run foobar because it's somewhere in a bin folder or so, a local bin, and it's more convenient. And those things you also want to test. So how do we do that? Great, the behavior. Right. If there are any questions, please interrupt me. Good. So, what's that uh, the strategy that we can try for uh, for doing that, for tackling those problems? We cannot do only unit testing, uh, so we need to verify the excellent behavior. And what I suggest, what I found out, what what is a viable approach is that you um, verify the, the excellent behavior by simply running the command. And you do this instead of shell, you can, you can replace this by OS system or um, uh, anything else. The shell is something from the CLI, is, a, is an implementation 
from the CLI test helpers package that is uh, compatible with all Python, all um, active Python versions, but it, it simply spawns a shell and, and runs a command. So it, and, and uh, puts the, the result, so the, the standard out, standard error, and exit code into an object that is returned. So it's, it's for convenient testing. Okay, so you can do it like that. So basically you do functional testing, and you can do this for all aspects of your CLI. You can do this for the, uh, for the uh, you want to, here you want to find out whether the CLI actually aborts when there is no, when there are no options or arguments there. And you, you simply uh, verify this with an exit code, uh, 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 yeah, unequal zero. Great. Then, from there, when you have covered the entire CLI, you go down to the unit tests. And you simply uh, do this. You can see here is the sparse arguments uh, method here, for example, and um, it, uh, or, or, or a function. And, and you do it the normal, the usual um, unit test way. Um, the only thing that, that maybe comes in handy is when you mock or when you yeah, um, pretend to have some or, or um, arguments, uh, argument values. So here, for example, uh, this is also a helper from the CLI test uh, um, helper package. Uh, the arc uh, v context basically uh, makes sure that basically your CLI application sees some arguments that, that, that would be running. Yeah. So it's like uh, pretending you're typing foobar, my file, minus, minus, or both, and then um, you can, can run the code inside. And there is an, a, simple, a, sim, a similar helper for, for environment variables and con, um, context. And uh, yeah, those are things, uh, those are the two ways that you would do. And, with that, you can, uh, yeah, cover your entire uh, test needs. Was that clear enough? Good. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. Um, I'm sorry we ran out of time, uh, but uh, maybe later we can continue if, if we have time. Good. So there's no, no minute left or so? Uh, one minute. I, I, I would, yeah, I really need to, what I, these are the examples that I would show then, um, basically explain how to do it. The, the deployment uh, aspect you do, you would do with Tox. Basically when you would do with uh, Tox, the, the CLI package is installed in a virtual environment. So it would be like pip install. You can verify everything like it would be installed with, after pip install. And here, just to close uh, the, the session, I would do, let me just, a final thing, get check out arc parse or something, and it's decodium. Um, yeah, I can do everything here. Great. So I have these examples here, for example. Um, you find the, those examples on, on, the, on GitHub. So um, if you go uh, on this, this, this CLI package, um, let me just show this to you. It's actually there. So Python CLI test helpers in the readme, it says there are these examples and um, these are bars, click and dog opt. You can actually, you can, Take them, they have the entire setup in there with talks. With setup pi, you can uh, refactor this to use only pi project toml and, uh, and setup config, for example. You have even a readme and a manifest and tests, everything there. And basically what you can do now is you can go into, into their run talks. And it's, it's really ready for I have not done anything. I've just copied the example there and it runs. And the interesting thing here is uh, the coverage is also configured in a way that it tells you what coverage you have and where coverage is missing. These are the lines that, that are missing. 
when you have, you can feed these numbers to uh, the Kubatura uh, plugin on, on, on GitLab, for example, and it will, it will display it nicely. And this way, I, I would like to close with the task, uh, with, with the talk. And uh, those numbers are important. The coverage, get it to 100%, then you have done the minimum. Okay, the minimum. It doesn't tell if it's at 100%, it doesn't say that your code is bug free, but at least you're walking all paths through. You don't leave holes in the autobahn. I want a, an autobahn where I can drive properly, okay? Whether there are bugs because the, the deers uh, jump on it every five minutes and I can drive, that's a different thing. There's, those may be bugs, but I don't want holes in the autobahn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.